Hello everyone, welcome to a new Sega Mega Drive game dev tutorial. In the previous lesson we learned how to do pallet cycling and in this lesson we're going to learn how to fade a pallet in from black. In that pallet cycling lesson we kept things very simple just using some functions and techniques that we'd already learned previously. In today's lesson we're going to get a bit more sophisticated, we're going to take the pallet data and we're going to store it in an array and then we're going to use that, the data in that array to slowly fade in the pallet. As our starting point today, we're going to take this simple Streets of Rage example. As I keep on reloading the ROM here, you can see that the transition is pretty jerky when it loads in the graphics. So you get the um, background loading first and then you get the foreground and the sprites loaded and it looks very jerky, very unprofessional. If we can instead have all the graphics load in from a very slow fade from black then that will look a lot better so let's go ahead and do that now. And as always any Patreon supporters can go over to the Patreon and you can download the source code for today's lesson. In our starting point here you can see that we have the power set palette function we've used that to define the four different palettes taking the data from the different graphical assets. You're going to want to comment all those out and today we're going to do something different we're going to take all the color data and we're going to store it in the background image and just for fun this is what the ROM looks like when we just let an SGDK choose the default palette data. These are the four graphical assets we're using in that little ROM. So the first one is the background with those colors and then we have the foreground here with these colors. Then the player sprite here with these colors and finally the enemy sprite with these colors. And the palette data from those four graphics are assigned to PAL 0 to 3 respectively. As I said just a moment ago what we're going to do instead we're going to store all the palette data in the first graphic in this background graphic here. So first of all I'm going to expand the um, palette to so we've got 64 different colors so 16 per row. You can, say, you can see here that it ranges from 0 to 63. The first row is going to correspond with PAL 0 and then the second row is going to be PAL 1 then PAL 2 and finally PAL 3. The process is very simple, we're simply going to take the palette data, the palettes from the other graphics and we're going to copy and paste them into our background graphic palette here. Most of the assets we're using here are using fewer than 16 colors per, um, per asset so we're going to have a few spare colors. What you need to make sure is you, you, they need to be neatly divided into rows so don't mix them up otherwise the colors will get a bit mixed up so you can see that we've got these black spare colors at the end of each of the palettes. If like in this example you're simply altering a graphic that you've already previously loaded into your resources.res file then you need to either do a clean or you need to do a just change superficially change the resources.res just add a letter save then delete that letter and save again because when you recompile the SGDK would only recompile the resources if some changes have been made to the resources.res file or if the you've chosen to clean the ROM before recompiling so make sure you do either of those two to make sure that the new um, the new updated background is uploaded onto your ROM. Okay back in our main.c what we're going to do next is we're going to create the array in which we're going to store the palette data. I believe I've covered arrays briefly in previous lessons especially in the one on the collision the level collision tutorial and you can think of it just instead of a variable which stores one piece of data an array can store many pieces of data. In this example we're going to be storing 64 pieces of data in our array because that's how many colors we have so we're going to do an unsigned 16-bit integer use 16 call it whoever you like open the square brackets put 16 and then the semicolon. With that done we're going to go over to our main loop so within the main brackets but before the while loop and before we load our tile set we're going to use a C function which is going to take the data from the background the 64 colors and it's going to store it into the array we just created. Mem copy here or M-E-M-C-P-Y is a standard C function which is used to copy data. Just like SGDK functions you can see that it takes parameters in this case three parameters so it's going to ask where you want to copy the data to where it's been copied from and the length of the data in terms of bytes. For the first piece of information we're going to give it the name of the uh, array we just created. Don't forget to put the ampersand or the and sign first then write the name you gave to the array then open the brackets and do the first entry of the array which of course is going to be zero. The second piece of info the function needs is where to get the data from, where is, it, where is it copying the data from and we're going to copy it from the background image. So remember it, for the background image where we, we did the 64 colors we called it within resource.res we called it background image. So just the same as when we defined the palettes in the normal way above when we did background image.palette um, hyphen 
uh, arrow data, we're going to write exactly the same thing in this particular parameter. The final piece of information we need to give this function is how big the data we're transferring is in terms of bytes. The actually in here, the each color is two bytes of data. So we can simply write a 64 times two. If you want, you could write 128, but I just did the 64 times two just to make it clear that each, um, what we're doing here, that each color is, t is a two bytes of data. And as usual, don't forget to put the semicolon at the end. Okay, so we've transferred the data from the, the palette data from that background image we created into this array. But remember, this array has just been stored in RAM. It's not actually doing anything with that palette data at the moment. It's simply storing it in RAM for us. To actually use that data to affect what's appearing on the screen, we need to use a palette function, an SCDK function. In this case, we're going to use pal underscore fade in. As you can see from the function description on the right hand side, what this does, it takes a palette and it fades it in from black. This particular function requires five pieces of data. The first one is the, it says uh, start color index for the fade operation, 0 to 63. The number 0 to 63 refers to the index of each palette. So we've got 64 colors available in the entire palette and they range from 0 to 63. So power 0 will be 0 from to 15 and then power 1, 16 to 31 and so on. So instead of splitting the palette into four, we're simply dealing with it in one single chunk of uh, colors from zero to 63 here. We will take a look at how to fade in any parts of the palette later, like I did in my Castlevania example in the beginning of the castle, but here simply write zero for the first one and 63 for the second, because we're going to fade in all of the colors of the palette. So remember 63 will be the 64th color in the palette. And just as a reminder, this is our background image here with the palette stored, so you can see it goes from 0 to 63. The third piece of information we need to give is the source where it's going to get the data from. So here we simply uh, write in the name of the array that we just created. No need for an ampersand this time or no need for any square brackets this time. Simply write the name of the array. The fourth piece of information is the says U16 num frame. So this is just how long it takes in the fade the palette from black. So if you wrote 60 here, then it will take one second to load in. 120 will be two seconds and so on. And if you put 30, it'll be half a second. The fifth parameter is just asking whether you want the everything to pause in the game until the colors are fading or whether everything in the game can continue as the colors fade in. We'll explore this in a more detail a bit later. For now, I'll just put this as true. Before we save, compile and load up our new ROM, just to have a quick recap. Previously, we set all the palettes individually, but this time we're taking the palette data from the uh, background, which we're showing all 64 colors. We're copying that into an array, and then eventually we're using that array to in the pal fade in function. So it's going to fade in from black. So let's now save, compile, and let's see what the ROM looks like. I think you can see some fading there from the palette, although we're still getting a little flashing problem. To make the fading a bit more clear, let me change the um, number, the the time it takes to a bit of a longer time just so we can see the fading a bit more clearly and with that set at 300 frames you can see that we're getting a much much slower fade in here feel free to experiment with this number as much as you like i think for most screen transitions maybe 20 to 30 frames is kind of normal quite ideal but do whatever you like and you might even want a much longer fade in if you want to do some kind of dramatic effect like in some gross enemy fading in or something while the fading itself is working correctly, we're still getting a bit of a flash of some graphical assets at the very beginning, so let's see if we can fix that problem. If we take a look at our code here, we can see that the PAL fading function is the very last thing to happen. Before that, we have the loading of all the graphical assets. Remember that the mem copy, all that's doing is loading the palette data into RAM, it's not actually affecting the palette. Before we fade in the palette, the SUDK is using this weird default palette instead. And it's the graphical assets using this weird default palette is what we're seeing flash up on the screen very briefly before the fade in happens. In order to fix this, what we need to do is we need to set every single color in the palette to black before we load in the assets. So in your code, just before we do the load in the tile set and so on, we need to use this function here, which is going to be pal underscore set colors. You can see the four parameters it takes here, so let's open up the brackets and let's take these one by one. Since we want to change all the colors in the palette to black, let's put zero for the starting off index. In terms of which RGB color to use, we don't have to put the values here. Thankfully, SGDK has a, um, a black palette already here, so simply write palette underscore black. 
This third parameter does things a little bit differently to how we use in PAL fading. Whereas in PAL fading, it asks us for the which index number to begin at and which index number to uh, to end at inclusively. This one's instead asking us for how many colors to affect. So there are 64 colors in between including 0 to 63. So we're going to count 64 colors. It was asking you to how many colors to affect from 0. So that'd be 64 colors. So I hope that's clear. It's a little bit confusing. So this is counting how many colors from the whether we put in the first one rather than asking for the color index. And finally for the transfer method, it doesn't really matter what we put here in this at this point in time. So just put DMA for now and don't forget the semicolon. So what we've done now in our code is we've copied the palette data first of all to our array. And remember that doesn't affect what appears on the screen in any way, but then we set all the colors to black. Then we uh, go ahead and we load all the graphical assets, but because they're all, the colors are set to black, you're not gonna get any flashing on the screen. And then finally we fade in the palette and that should work just fine. So let's save compile and let's run the ROM. And this time now that we've made change to our code, we get a nice smooth fade in from black with no flashing graphical assets. And if you want to get it really straight in your head how all this is working, feel free to change the order of things. For example, putting the set colors to black just after we load in the graphical assets. And you'll see here that we get the that same kind of uh, flashing of the graphics before we actually get the fade in. So to get this to work, it's best to put the set of colors to black before we load in all the graphics. Earlier in the lesson, I skipped over the fifth parameter of the PAL fading function. I said we'll cover that later, so let's focus on it now. When set to true, it means that all the other processes of the game are going to continue as the colors fade in. But if we change this to false instead, it means it's going to wait for all the for the fading to happen before any other process in the game can allow be allowed to continue. So as always, it's always best to experiment just to prove how it works. So let's set this to false now. Let's save and compile and let's see what the difference is. As the picture very slowly fades in, you'll notice that the sprites haven't appeared yet, and that's because all the stuff we've written in our while loop about updating the sprites and handling the inputs, they're not going to work until the uh, fading is actually finished. So that's what happens when we set it to false. So in most circumstances, I think you're going to want to set this to true. And I think that's going to be probably the best under most circumstances, but I'm sure there are some scenarios where setting it to false will be the right choice. And just to re-emphasize this, if I set it back to true, you can see that as the colors are fading, the sprites are already there and I can also move the sprites wherever I want. So the handle input and other functions are working fine as the um, colors fade in. Before we finish today's lesson, let's play around with another parameter within the pal fading function. Remember that the first two parameters of the function, they dictate from which color index to which color index the uh, fade in effect will take effect on. Setting this at 0 and 15 will mean only the uh, first 16 colors of the palette are faded in, so the rest remain at black. So we can see that just the uh, background um, asset is the ones that's got the colors fade in. If we change that to 31, it means it's going to load the first 32 colors of the palette, which in our case are set to the uh, background and the foreground. If you want to do what I did with the Castlevania example, where the uh, different parts of the castle fade in at different times, you might need to create additional um, palettes, additional arrays with different palettes in and fall around a bit more, but at least it gives you a quick idea of how it might work. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in this kind of content, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm interested in this. And if you wish to support the channel further and want to get extra things, for example, the code for each lesson, then I have a patron and any support is much appreciated. You won't go unrewarded. Until next time. Farewell.